let's talk about ng on changes method from the component life cycle to understand the concept of ng on changes method let's go back to our book store application and this application is running on this port 4200 this is the browser and this application is working over here let's go to the home page of this application so this is the public component this is home and here is the home component in this home component we are using this data and we are also using this app authors this app authors is another component and we are using it as a child over here let's go to this app authors component also so this is available in this shared here is the authors and this is the html for this authors component basically these two components are working as parent and child the home is parent and this authors is let's clean these components and let's learn about the ng on changes so here i'm just removing this line we are only having this authors works message let's remove this data as well set data also we don't need it the button click as well and let's remove this service also so here you will see that this is a very simple authors component let's go to the home as well and let's do the cleanup here also here we are only using this test service let's keep it all that is not required but it won't create any problem so here is the html and from this part let's remove this as well so now we are having this message homeworks in the parent component and we are using this child component in the child we are having only one message that is the author works and just for the learning purpose here i can find parent and here in the authors i can write the child like this let's go back to the browser and here you can see we are having only two messages first is the parent and second is the child now let's talk about the ng on changes method whenever we pass any data from a parent to the child component using at the rate input property and if there is any change in that input property then every time that ng on changes method will get called first let's go back to the child component so this is the authors component and here let's use one input property so here i'm using this input like this let's give any meaningful name let's say i'm using the data and it is of type number let's display this number on this html as well so here i'm using this input from parent and I'm using this data property here in the HTML. Now, if I want to get the data in this data property, I need to pass it from the parent component. Let's look at the parent component. Here we are in the HTML file, and here I have to use the data. And let's pass it. Let's say it is one. That's it. Go back to the browser. It is working fine. Here in the parent component, we are passing the hard coded data, and that data is visible over here. Now let's use the ng on changes method. In the child component, we need to implement that on changes interface. On changes. Immediately we will get an error over here. It is saying that ng on changes is declared over here and we have to provide its definition. Let's implement it like this. So I'm just removing it from here. You will see this ng on changes method is having one parameter that is the changes and the type is simple changes. The return type is void. To understand what we have in this changes parameter, let's display it value on the console. And for that, I can use console.log. And let's use this change it. Save all the changes and go back to the browser. Let's open the developer tool. Go to the console section. Here we are. Here you will notice that we are having one object. Let's say what we have over here. We are having this data and it is having three properties. First is the current value. First change the previous value. Let's understand these properties in this method. If I go to the definition of the simple changes, here you will see that the simple changes again is an interface, a kind of contract. And here we are having these things. This property name is dynamic. This is something that we are using as an input property. So this is going to be dynamic. Then it will have this type simple changes. And in the simple changes, we are having these three properties. The first is previous value. This could be any. This is the current value. This is again any. And this is the first chain. It is the Boolean. 
Now, whatever property name we are using in this input property that will be used as a property name in this changes interface using this concept and it will have three properties and the entire thing is visible over here. This data, this name is coming from at the rate input property. Whatever name you will give there that will come over here. So the name is data. So it is also data. This is the first property and the type of this data is this simple change. It has three properties. The current value of this property is one. That is why we are having one over here. Is this the first thing? Yes, this is the first thing. That is why it is true. And there is no previous value. That is why it is undefined. Now, this is something that we are using in the hard-coded value. But in the real application, it is not always the scenario that we will use the hard-coded value. We will also pass the dynamic values. Let's do that. So in the parent component here, let's use a new button. And here I'm using counter. Let's use the click event and here I'm using counter. Let's use this counter method in the home component over here. So I'm using public counter and let's use the void. And here let's get one public property that is count and the type is number and let's put the default value as zero. And here in the counter, we will use the counter plus plus. We have to use this like this. It's very simple. Now, in the home component, the data that we are passing in the child component, it is hard coded, but let's replace it with the count. This count is the property that we have defined over here. Now, what we are doing, we are having a dynamic value and we can increase the value by using this button. Let's go to the browser. Here you will see the default value is zero. And in the data simple changes, we are having this is the current value, this is the first change, true, and this is the previous value that is the undefined. Very well. Let's clean this console using this button and hit on this counter button. Basically, this time we are updating the input data. So here what we have. This time we are having the current value is one. This is the first change. No, this time this is not the first change. What was the previous value? It was zero. Let's hit the counter button again. We are having one more object over here. And again, you will see that we are having this current value. This is true. This is the first change. No, and this is the previous value. So what is the purpose of ng on changes? Whenever there is any change in the input property that we are getting from the parent, every time this ng on changes will get called. Now let's assume that we are having one more property over here. And this time I'm using this. And here let's write data to and again its value is and let's give it value boolean. Boolean. Let's pass this data also from the component. So here we are in the component, the parent component. And for this one also to make it dynamic, let's create one more property. Public. Let's give it test. The type is boolean and this is the default value that is the false so here in this counter method i will toggle its value how this dot test is equals to this dot test so if its value is false then it will be converted to true and it will get assigned to here if it is false then it will be converted to true and we need to pass the second property here in this child components let's do that so i'm having this data too and what is the name of our property it is test very good save all the changes go back to the browser this time in the console only you will see we are having two properties first is the data and second is the data too we are making change here that is why we are having all three properties we also have three properties over here this is the current value that is false the first thing true and there is no previous value let's hit the counter button again Go to the console. Again, you will see we are having one more console and this time this is the current value for the first property and here in the data two as well, we are having all the changes. All the input properties that you will use in your child component, those will be logged in the ng on changes method. And if you need to change some logic on change of your input property, then ng on changes is the best method. And just remember one more thing 
this ng on changes will get called every time there is a change in this input property. So try to avoid writing the complex logic over here because this will get called multiple times and if you run your complex logic multiple times over here then your application will get slow.